been quite a while. So here's the H form series kind of comes to a close as we kind of round the corner, kind of look back. The one topic for today, as I come to the end is nutrient density. How did I do with say 30 days of that change and just working it well, I did it slow. I didn't just say cut out all the, the new uh, high calorie foods and just eat nutrient dense. That's the end of the series. You know, I have a different definition of what's healthy and unhealthy. Most people would say nutrient dense foods are healthy. And one thing it does for me is performance. It makes me feel better. It makes me reap the rewards of eating like that. It just if it doesn't taste good or if I don't like to eat like that, then it's probably not best. In preparation or seasonings, there's a ton of different things I do. You'll have to go check that out. Really in terms of if you're a numbers person, 80-20, that's really where I'm gonna have, say, a sustainable diet that is gonna keep me on, say, fat loss. So if I lose weight too fast right now, by the time I get to March, if I haven't rebounded, then it'll be one of those things that's gonna be miserable. It's uh, something that the body catches on at some point when you start trying to cut calories and be in these very long calorie deficits. You burn out the central nervous system. If I take it slow, my body doesn't really notice and I'm still having foods. I don't feel like I'm cheated out of anything, so. Just finishing up day 22. And so for the start of this week, I got to have some more nutrient dense foods, which is great. For dinner, we had um, some takeout and pizza and salad and stuff, which is fine because for the most part, um, I felt a little bit better already just having a little more protein and you know, let's say some more nutrient dense carbs. So looking forward to tomorrow, eating every two to three hours, you know, just to make sure that I'm not being too hungry throughout the day. So going to carry forth also with the habits I've built from the first three weeks, which was to remove alcohol, not calorie track and to uh, say not binge eat at night. So. So something I want to point out really quick is that when you're changing habits, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're removing one. Sometimes it's you're trying to add one in. And for me, this is something that's so ingrained as meal prep. This is something I can do. And what's most important too is when you're struggling is to keep busy. And so this to me, I kind of find a little bit of um, say peace with, you know, it's something that I know that I'm going to get to this at some point. You don't always have to focus on the negative, which is removal. You can all, all, almost focus on trying to add something in and learn a new skill. And that's something that you can do too and have it. So just my two cents and uh, kind of goes along with today and a day when you're struggling, do something that you like to do, do something that um, helps you get through it. So all you got to do is, you know, get your head to the pillow that night, go to sleep and you wake up the next day and you're already moving along. Day 24. Um, actually very, very busy days, so got to get a little more food in. But yeah, in terms of habit changes, very happy with changing my nutrition over and it hasn't been absolutely perfect, but that's not really the goal. A more quality carbohydrates and more quality fats. So um, just to make me feel a little bit better in terms of my energy and um, life quality overall. Day 25, just about done here. I'm finishing up some homework, but kind of about another half hour till I go to bed. Most importantly, it's more, it's past that midpoint of the week. So this is Thursday, so only a few more days to ride out. And really the habit I changed this week was more about nutrient dense foods, which I've been able to do. I've also been holding up on those other habits pretty decent. Although sometimes I think about them, right? Especially when it comes to say alcohol, having a beer, or you know, even when it comes to like say wanting to track my calories just a little bit, um, I just have to stop for now, like I said, because this is part of the long-term journey. It's changing habits, it's changing the mindset, and you can do you can make it whatever you want it to be. So what's most important to finish these four weeks off is to just stay the course a few more days and then I can recalculate where to go from here. Day 26, we are wrapping up here. We only have a couple days left, and that's really one of the things that you know when you're really pushing and you're changing habits. Just seeing the finish line or that, you know, that last little bit, it makes it a lot easier because when you start, it's kind of can be kind of easy. The end can be kind of easy. It's all that time in the middle that can be challenging, right? As you're just like, ah, is it worth it or not? So tonight we actually had some fast food and it's not a big deal because a lot of the meals I had say earlier in the day, they were high in higher nutrient density. And I also put in some veggies and fruits with uh, my dinner. So just way to start. My sleep's been very good this week. Very proud of that. So something to look forward to and hopefully that I do better with this next transformation. So, so day 27 is just about in the books here with the H form series and that's great because I'm almost at the end. Now, some of the habits that I've changed from the beginning of the start of this, <clears throat> they're I'm right in line with where I'd like to be just because I don't have that overly fixating on calories anymore. Um, alcohol is kind of a thing in the past. I'm not gonna say I'll never drink again because that'd be stupid, I've done that and then I've fallen into that say, have it and just like it was a very humbling journey so my nutrition's gotten a little bit better let's say in terms of nutrient dense foods over this week my sleep's been really good i've for sure slowed down that you know real binge eating right before i go to bed i've had a couple instances where i wanted to say 
eat a little bit just before I went to bed, and I gave myself that little window. I didn't completely say I can't eat before bed. I just, you know, gave myself a little bit of balance. So, so 28 days, and we go ahead, went ahead and completed um, that for, you know, alcohol. Uh, we removed that for a month, and that's like actually exactly what I need. I'm feeling really good about it. Um, just making sure that um, as I go forward, just got to make sure to reduce the temptation and just keep it out of there for a little while just while I do these say goals in order to say hit my goals so that's really important when you're trying to change habits is to keep that focus and keep it at the back of your mind but it gets easier as you go and as we go months in it's going to get even more easier so not the best weather but still going to get this walk in it's actually a great time to talk about this acronym of steps and something I brought up but so my goal was to get my walk in for the day the time I only had actually one block I could get this done pretty busy day so it was either now or never and so execute that's where I just had to do it and the hardest part was stepping out the door into the weather when I saw it didn't look great outside and if it, I didn't feel like doing it then I would have just sat at my desk but I knew I needed to get this in so that kind of brings up progression, which is what I could have done is maybe done a shorter walk. And that's actually how all this started was I didn't start on three miles, 40 to 45 minutes. It was just one mile. And I just found a one mile loop and I built on that and built on that. Something that was a reasonable amount of time and to get the growth I needed in the, say that window of what I'm looking for, which is mind, body, soul. Now the last one, which is stay committed. So that's why I'm out here because a lot of people would say, oh, it's too cold. I had a beanie, have to put a beanie on, gloves. And so I just knew that it was something to, you know, get done. And even though I didn't want to, in some senses, I just kind of know I'm gonna feel a lot better that I got it in. And the time I used this for was, say, beneficial to me. And not only that, I get to do this video real quick rather than figuring out how to do it later, because that's something you may have noticed. I use this time to multitask and do other things in my life, not just say, think about food and fitness. So. Um, well, I'm going to finish this walk off in this brisk weather and a little bit chilly and windy. So um, I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, nutrient density. It's something that's important. You know, say a higher split, 80-20. If I do 90-10, that's a little more discipline. That's something like in the Q form or even Q form sometimes is probably what's going to be is like there's going to be days where it's 100 zero, but not every day. Just the days where I'm looking for the drastic change and manipulation of carbs, what I call advanced dieting. And that's something that I'll talk about once we get to there, because that was a topic of endless. I didn't really go into all the different diet types, the different advantages. You can look them up if you're curious. But for me, carbohydrate manipulation is something that is you know, it's different for everybody and it can work different at times. Like, and I've tried different things. Some work, some don't. Fasting doesn't generally work that great for me. Some people love it. And if I'm trying to look for something long-term, I'm not gonna fast. And if I do fast, it's for just a quick day. Something I bring in as if it's my advantage and it helps me keep my deficit and that I'm, you know, okay in the process. So that's gonna do it for this one. And uh, we're pretty close to wrapping up each form. Here with a follow-up just to let you know how everything kind of shaped out some of the challenges some of the things that worked well so the first thing we're going to start with was the alcohol let's say this was the toughest one right substituted that out put in things like uh, calorie low calorie sodas and overall that's going really well it's one of those things where my goals are helping me keep this in check so january is kind of a month where they say dry january and a lot of people tend to give up alcohol so i have that kind of working to my advantage so i'm not really struggling with this one at the moment so overall this habit change success. So the next habit we had was the fitness pal and using the food scale, not being so obsessive about it. And it was a struggle, I gotta admit. As a matter of fact, I had it installed on two different phones. I tried maybe only using it a couple times a day, but then I was forgetting things. Kind of tried a number of different things. I would say this is one that's kind of still in the works. I don't think I have this one solved for the most part. I've kind of let go of being obsessed with it. And so right now I would say mentally, my strategy is thinking, okay, this is a tool that I can use. This is not a requirement that I need. So it's really helpful in terms of helping me manage, say, fat loss 
and getting towards those goals. I'd say I'd give it a kind of middle of the road in terms of how this worked out. And here was the big one, binging, you know, after nine o'clock, just eating up until I went to bedtime. And I said, I was just gonna go to bed earlier, use a sleep aid, make sure I get to bed on time. Well, unfortunately for me, I'm still struggling with this one because not only just the temptation or the want to eat late at night, but because of our lifestyle. And now we're back to, let's say, the kids being busy with their sports and all the different schedules we have and work. So our days are getting kind of hectic and that's just gonna keep continuing on throughout the spring. The lesson learned from this one is try and prioritize my sleep to go to bed a little earlier or do something to kind of calm my mind. Even if I happen to be eating, maybe say not so much of this stuff, but maybe more nutrient dense food. So kind of combining that with another habit in order to let's say manage my calorie deficit when that's important. This one did not pan out. This is a thumbs down. This one's a fail. It's been so many years. It's something that I'll have to figure out at some point. How did nutrient density go? Well, this one's a work in progress. I like to think that this is the one that I kind of have the most control over. It was, it was a habit that I ingrained over years. And then when I removed it, it wasn't gone long enough to let's say forget how to cook, forget how to use seasonings, what foods I get the most energy on, what foods that I like, what foods that are I don't like. I didn't forget how, how many calories were in things because I've already adapted that over so many years. Like I said, overall, this one, I would call a success for the most part. It's just gonna keep getting better because now I need this one. I need to have nutrient dense foods and I have to have this say in check and self-discipline and self-control. How did everything go? Well, I would say a success because I learned. So there was no good or bad in this. It was learning opportunities. Some of these habits worked out well. Some of them I wasn't able to change. And that's what it really comes down to when you're trying to say change behavior, you know, just having a better life quality. That's really the point of changing habits, of changing routines, is to give you, say, happiness, a joy, a better life, um, better relationships. It's all about that in the end. So it's a positive thing. You really just have to kind of self-assess and kind of walk through the process. And when something isn't work, working, then try something else. It just depends on your lifestyle, depends on, say, your preferences, depends on what else is going on in your life, that might depend on your job, might depend on, say, your, your schedule. There's so many things that affect, say, habits and change. And so with habit shaping, it's something that I'm, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's something I'm very interested in. I like to experiment. I like trying some of the different things and seeing how my body responds, how my mind responds. It's a way to continue to get better because I'm gonna be doing a series, say, starting in the summer, where I'm gonna be investigating say certain changes we're going to take a variable and we're going to see what happens for say 30 days kind of like we did with this but not doing multiples at a time or multiple series for the most part it's just going to be focusing on one thing specific and so one of the first things i thought about one of the biggest I would say debates in terms of the world of fitness is sugar. Hey, what happens when you cut out 30 days of sugar? How do you feel? What's good about it? You know, what's most important? So if that's something you kind of like to check out and want to see, um, go subscribe to your boy coach and uh, just kind of wait. Um, there's a lot of daily videos coming out at this point right now. So if you don't want to get flooded, you know, with all the other content that's going to be going over the next few months, then just kind of hold out for that. Kind of put it as a reminder in your phone or calendar. So if you're still with me, I really appreciate it. First and foremost, thank you. Um, appreciate the support and the comments and the likes. I really hope it's given you something, some kind of value that you're benefiting from some of the ideas or maybe just seeing someone else's journey that'll try this stuff. So until the next series, take care. Peace out. You know, if you're getting any benefits, you can always comment about it. I can take negative feedback if you want to call it that because I'm pretty secure in that area and with what I'm doing. So that'll be it. And then I can just focus straight up on uh, X-Farm and take you through each week. See you in the next one.